Okay, so let's talk about soloing, right? It's something that will crop up when you're playing jazz. You will be called to to solo around in our for out, you know, in this in this um, instance, autumn leaves or whatever standard you're playing at the time. And it's going to help you if you, you know, know how to go at it to get the best result. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is what you just heard. Okay. Um, was a solo, just a little solo I played around. It was 120 BPM. Again, if you want to give it a go, you've got all the backing tracks in multiple speeds and styles, okay? Um, and all I was really doing over that was using chord tones and some chromatic passing tones, okay? Again, we're using the same information that we use when we're creating our walking bass lines. Same thing, we're using... using the same information. There's no trickery around it, okay? No trickery, just using the same thing and a few chromatic notes in that we'll talk about in this workshop actually, okay? So the first thing you need to do when you get into soloing, especially over something like this, is getting used to outlining the chords. Now I mean that as in, if, as a listener is listening to you, okay, solo over this piece, they should be able to follow the chords without the rest of the band being there. So without, I'm going to do a little solo, okay, around, let's say the first eight bars of Autumn Leaves, and you'll be able to hear the different chords as I go by. Now, it could be said that all of this is in B flat major, okay, which is true, or G minor, but it's the same key, G minor is obviously the relative minor of B flat major. So you could essentially play just B flat major over the entire thing, which would sound like this. I want two, three, four. Okay, it, but it just, you can't hear any chords, okay? Whereas if I use the chords to outline, so use the chord tones, eight bars, I'm sure you can, you know, appreciate that you can hear the chords going by up the C minor to the F7, down to the E flat, A minor 7 flat 5, to the D7, to the G minor, to the G7, to the C minor, to the F7, to the B flat, to the E flat, to the A, 
<laughs> can't do that, I'm running out of strings. Um, you can hear the chords going by. That's why it's so important to know your chord tones. When you first start soloing, what I'd really recommend is just instead of going at it all over the fingerboard, try and pick a certain area and work on it. And for this workshop, we're gonna be looking at this area here, right, okay? And we're gonna get used to playing the arpeggios, ascending and descending, okay, around this first bar sequence, and then you can take it through the rest of the sequence, right? So first of all, let's look at ascending. And I just want you to play quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay, again, two, three, four. C minor. F dominant, B flat major seven, E flat major seven, A minor seven flat five, D seven, G minor, G dominant. Okay, so that's exercise one. Exercise two, let's flip that around and play it from the seventh descending, okay? So from the seventh of the C minor, we're gonna descend down the arpeggio. From the seventh of the F7, we're gonna descend down the arpeggio. From the, you've got it, seven of the B flat major and onwards, okay? One, two, three, four. And again. Remember to take it around the entire piece and when you get down to here, what do you do? You double up. bar. Okay, so you just double up. When you get to the bars that have two in, double up. Okay, so we've done it ascending. Descending. We're just really solidifying where the arpeggios are in this area of the neck, right? Okay, now a little bit faster. Let's get that brain working. And onwards, okay? You can speed it up, you know, take it to where you're comfortable at it with it. And if you're not anywhere near that, don't worry. Just slow it down. When it, when you're playing a solo, two, three, uh, four. There's no technique here. Simple. Okay, there's no technique, I'm not burning or anything like that. That's the cool thing about this, you can play really simply and get a great sounding line, okay? Now, we've gone up the arpeggios, okay? Then we descended from the seventh down the arpeggios. Now let's do both. So we ascend up the C minor, then descend down the F7 from the seventh, okay? Not the root, descend from the seventh. Ascend up the B flat, descend from the seventh down the E flat and onwards, okay? round the entire piece, remember. I'm only showing you the first eight bars. I want you guys to go round the entire piece. Double up when you get to here, okay? 
Here we go. Ascend in. Two, three, four. And again, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, now it was a little disjointed that exercise and it's because you're going up And then you're, you're jumping down here. It can be a lot smoother. And this is where we get into voice leading, which is really important, where you play a, a line and then you move to the next available note, next available note from the next chord, okay? And this is what this next exercise is gonna bring into play. So what we're gonna do is go up the minor seven, okay, and then play the third and descend down the F7, but from the third of the F7. Again, up the C minor seven from the root, and then descend down the F7 from the third. Ascend up the B flat major seven, and then descend down the E flat major seven from the third. It's gonna sound like this. Up the C minor, and then to the third of the F7, and you can hear how the voice leading is just much more smoother. Up to the seven, to the third of the dominant, and then down, then to the B flat and up, two, three, four, to the third of the E flat, down the arpeggio, to the A minor seven flat five, to the third of the D flat nine, Okay, or we could to the, okay, so I'll just do it again. Okay, so, and then up the minor, up the G minor, and then you could go, you could go to the, actually just to, let's to keep the, um, keep the formula the same. Let's go up the minor, and then to the third of the G7 going down. Up the minor, G minor, then jump to the third. The, the voice leading isn't as smooth there, but I wanted to keep the formula the same all the way through. So up one arpeggio to the third of the next one, and then descend, okay? But you're not descending right to the bottom of the arpeggio, you're just descending four notes. It's four notes on each chord, okay? It's gonna sound like this. if you want, down the F7, up the B flat, down the E flat from the thirds remember, up the A minor 7 flat 5, to the D7, to the G minor, to the G7, <laughs> ran out of notes, okay, great exercise. If you want, just keep it in this area because this is the area that we really want to be getting, you know, super focused on. Again, so we're going to go. Here's what it sounds like, just sped up a bit. And again, a bit faster. Bit of swing in there. Can you hear how that's a great solo line in itself? Two, one, two, three, four. It's a great 
great solo line in itself. And this is how solo lines are built by using um, voice leading like that. That's C minor. Result of the third of the F. That's just a little line around that, uh, around that first four bars. Okay, just a little voice leading like that. Don't think of another one that I use. Just a little voice leading. Look for the note to move to. You could do the fist. Okay, there I'm just going from the seven of the C minor to the F seven, the, the fifth of the F, and then to the F B flat to the fifth of the D, and then to the uh, the fifth of the G7. So it's you know mess around with stuff like this. Now what I'm, what I want you to do now, okay, is just play that backing track. Play the play the um, the exercises that we've talked about around the the track, okay. And then what I want you to do, guys, is I want you to pre-compose pre-compose a solo around this sequence, okay. I want you to pre-compose it. I don't want you to improvise yet. I want you to pre-compose that solo, okay. One chorus. I don't want any licks in there, any tearing around. I just want you to pre-compose a really nice solo around this chord progression once around the head, okay? This is the head. Once around this chord progression. And what you're going to find is a really great player told me, I think I've mentioned it once in this course before, Zoltan Dekany, who I studied with for a little bit. He said, if you can't pre-compose it, you're never going to be able to improvise it. Okay, you're never going to be able to improvise if you can't actually just come up with a great version that you've that you've composed. So what I want you to do is pre-compose it using chord tones only. Okay, you can have chromatic notes in. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. You can have chromatic notes in, but really just aim for the chord tones and moving through the arpeggios. Okay, using those arpeggios, pre-compose it, and then for the second chorus, okay, that's when I want you ting, a little ting, that was an idea in my head, I don't know if you could hear that, okay. So pre-compose the first chorus, a full solo, really could not, no tearing though, just real simple, okay, you can choose your tempo, maybe start slow, 120 BPM is a nice tempo, maybe go a little bit slower than that if you need to. Pre-compose that first chorus, okay. And then the second chorus, that's when I want you to try and improvise, okay, on the second chorus. It's going to feel weird to start with, but what I want you to do is that pre-composed solo to start with, okay, that's going to give you an idea of what it feels like to play a solo, what it feels like to get away from just playing a, a walking bass line or a, to play a groove, okay. It's going to get you into playing actual, you know, a soloistic type of vibe over tune like this. Pre-compose that solo, and then for the second chorus, I want you to try and improvise, okay? Just using chord tones, just using chord tones. Now, to pre-compose something over this, depending on where your level is, it might take you a week, it might take you a month. It's worth putting the work in, guys. It's worth putting the work in, and then try and improvise. In this area as well, concentrate on this area. Okay, we've gone through the ascending arpeggios. We've gone through the descending arpeggios from the sevenths. Okay, we've mixed them up and gone up one and down the other. And then we've got into voice leading by going up the arpeggios and to the third of the next chord and down. Up the arpeggio to the third of the next chord and then down. Okay, you've got all the information that you need to be able to solo over this piece now, but 
what you're probably lacking is experience. Okay, so this is what I'm going to try to give you now. By pre-composing a solo, then you can take that solo and try and improvise the second chorus. So pre-compose the first chorus, second chorus, try and improvise, okay? Take it easy on yourself. Take it easy on yourself. It's a big learning curve, okay? It took me a long time to be able to, you know, um, improvise over a, a tune like this. Once you've learned how to, you know, play over a tune like this, it becomes a lot easier when you move it to other tunes. But this is, it's the first step to get into it, okay? Now, I did mention <coughs> chromatic notes, and you can use these. Um, it's a little bit more of an advanced technique, but it, it's cool, it's cool. So I'm gonna mention it because I think it's worth the, uh, when you're pre-composing your solo, it might um, make it a little bit more fun, okay? So you've got your chord tones. Okay, you've got your chord tones and you know them inside out. What you can do is chromatic runs into notes, okay? So you could, for instance, instead of just going boo boo da dee on the C minor, you could play boo do boo do da dee boo do do boom ba dee So I'm just doing a little chromatic run of three notes. One, two, uh, three, a uh, boo boom boo boom ba dee You could use the same technique, moving to the third of the F7, boo 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 do da dee Da -de -da -de -da -de. Same thing, okay? That was a chromatic run of three going down to the third of the E flat, okay? Okay, great solo lines, right? Another thing that you can do, and you can do that, you can run, do a chromatic run into a root, into a third, into a fifth, down to a root, down to a third. Uh, sometimes you can, you know, sometimes you can. It's worth experimenting with. Down to a seven you can, you know. Um, another thing you can do is what's called um, an, in an enclosure, where you enclose a note with a semitone either side. So let's take the C minor. Okay, let's play a semitone either side of each note within that arpeggio. There's the arpeggio. So you play a semitone above, a semitone below, and then you hit the chord tone. So the root, then the minor third, then the fifth, then the seven. Okay, root, third, fifth, flat seven. Okay, and you don't have to do it throughout the chord, you could just do it on one note, so you could, um, on the C minor, you could do it just on the fifth. And that gets us to the, the major third of the F. So what I did there is, I mixed two concepts, I did an enclosure on the fifth, Play the seven of the of the uh, the C minor, and then a chromatic note run, chromatic run up to the third of the F. Again, that was a chromatic note no, run up to the major third of the B flat. Chromatic note run down to the E flat, the third of E flat. You getting this? It's really cool, right? Look for them chromatic notes that you can use to run into that next chord. Look for the enclosures as well. You can get over the F7. Oh, so there I went down the two, three, four, one. Down the C minor from the seven, and you've learnt it because we did it in the exercises. Down from, descending from the flat seven. Now I went. <laughs> so as I'm enclosing the root of the F7, then enclosing the third. I can't remember what the 
remember what I played at the end of it. Anyway, but... Actually, I went... I just went up the F7 arpeggio. Third, five, flat seven, root. And then to the third of the B flat, okay? To Drake solo line. So there's two versions of using chord tones and enclosures, okay, with chromatic notes <clears throat> around just the beginning of this, okay? So first one went. Which took us to the, the third of the F7, up the C minor, an enclosure on the fifth. So remember in enclosure, just the semitone above a chord tone, semitone below the chord tone, then you land on the chord tone. Then up chromatically to the third of the F7. Okay, and the next one is the descending one that we did. So we're going down the C minor from the seven, enclosing the root of the F7. Enclosing the third, then just up the F dominant seven, and then to the third of that B flat major, okay? So again, just to run over it, okay? Pre-compose a solo using these techniques, chord tones, voice leading, Chromatic runs into the chord tones, and when you're feeling fruity, enclosures around the chord tones, okay? And then for the second chorus, I want you to improvise using the chord tones, okay? You're probably going to, you know, get, your pre-composition will be more complex than the improvisation, obviously, to start with, but it won't always be like that. But guys, if you use this information, it's going to have a huge effect on your soloing and your playing. Just go do it.